Just needs to get the world champion past the model here. Has a couple freezes, so it'd be worth a freeze there to save her. But wait, is that an ice hound? What the heck? What? Why is there an ice hound with the world champion? Where did that even come from? Today is the grand finals of the Golden Heart Cup. We have United Gaming GS, who won across the upper bracket and went undefeated all the way into the grand finals. But on the side there, the team that failed Navi and then Tribe Gaming twice, it is Iqbal and Iqbal as their opponent today. And we have player counts as well. So let me just get our first attacker, Nairobi, onto camera here. Looks like he's right there. So let me pop him out there and let's see how this grand finals goes. But remember, since this is a double elimination tournament and out of the upper bracket came United Gaming GS, and that means that they have two lives remaining. And that means that Iqbal and Iqbal, AKA Escalator Esports, is going to have to win twice if they want to take this war, if they want to take this series and take this grand finals. But Nairomi, pushing his way in here with Electro Titans, he's got a bunch of bat spells. You know what? I mean, you just don't see bats used a lot nowadays. Not in the kinds of numbers that Nairomi is busted out here, but he's got a jump spell. He'll just push the Electro Titans through that top corner, jump across to go secure the Town Hall, and probably pick up that Molten Inferno, maybe the Ego Artillery as well, but over on the right, far right side of the base there, the Flame Flicker opens up into some Super Minions, and here comes the Bats across the top of the base there. Tess is popping the area, but he's going to get a lot of value out of the Bats here. If they wipe out the Monolith and the Eagle Artillery and all the lighter defense in the area, he's in a very, very good spot. But he's freezing up at the Multi. He's going to get the Multi. That's huge right there. The Bats are going unimpeded across the top of the base. Queen is to pick up with the healers in the core of the base there. She's taking the scatter shot, keeping the damage off. Balloons going down south there. They pick up the last wizard tower, but the model did end up surviving. And the bats are starting to dwindle down just a little bit there. But the world champion's still moving. RC ability attack here. The, look at the there we go. RC ability takes out the last little bit of HP onto that monolith. And it is gonna be an opening triple. What? An insane attack here to open up our grand finals. Nairomi gets it done. And as you saw from our previous match results, when they face in the upper bracket, this is the score that they had. So it looks like Nairomi missed in that one, but he makes it up today as they try to prevent this bracket reset. So that attack was pretty cool, but is not as cool as our sponsor for today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. It's wild to me to think that Raid now has over 700 unique champions, which you can use to build out all kinds of different strategies and teams to complete the most difficult challenges in the dungeons, bosses, and in PvP. I'd like to say I'm a pretty seasoned player when it comes to Raid Shadow Legends. I've been playing the game for years, and I gotta say, I'm very impressed by this game because every time I turn around, they add more stuff, they keep making it better, and it's constantly improving. You want a free Legendary Champion? Of course you do, that's a silly question, especially when they're as cool as this. Check out Sun Wukong. Raid's take on the mischievous Monkey King covered as a free Legendary Champion. All you gotta do is log in a raid on several different days between August 22nd and October 23rd, and you get your hands on this awesome champion. No rogue journey to the west is required. Just log in. That's it. I wanna hook you guys up. If you use promo code JTSKIN, I'm gonna hook you up with a Stag Knight and this awesome new skin that was designed by JonTron. With all this exciting stuff and more coming to raid, if you haven't started playing yet, what are you waiting for? New players, use my link or scan the QR code on the screen and get a free starter pack with all this in-game loot and a free epic champion. Just hit that link in the description, pass the tutorial, and I'll see you on the battlefield. Every accomplished tutorial helps support the channel and I really appreciate it. Guys, thank you again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring our video today and let's get back into it. Okay, cameras are being stupid. The cameras decided that they wanted to go off to the left instead of across the top like normal. So <laughs> maybe I gotta like put two people on camera and then it like shifts it. I don't know. Wait, wait, let me, let me just do that. And then I'll put him back on and then he'll be in the middle. There we go. That works. We figured it out. <laughs> we, we, got his, uh, we got his teammate on there as well, but you know what? We got him on camera. So we'll make it, we'll make it uh, work like that. All right. <laughs> we had to improvise, adapt and improvise. Just like the players have to do here. Looks like he did use some lightning to take out the Expo and the Multi Inferno. Picked up a bomb tower as well with it and just connected that with the Ward of Walk. And it does look like he's already put up top here. So he's getting ready to go towards the town hall 
as his priority, which is fine on this base here because look at where the look at where the Eagle Artillery is. It's a, it's in the very very middle of the base there. Like usually when I say go south, so we get the Eagle Artillery off of his back relatively early. But with the Eagle Artillery accessible in the middle of the base there, I agree with his move to go with this approach. So we will. Get the Queen and the Warden to take the turn into the base there. All the Titans are going in as well. Siege Barracks goes to the outside, which is out there. And the King and Electra Titan will just give tons of tanking and protection for all the damage output from the Siege Barracks. Does engage the CC up there. Needs to get something to do with these Headhunters here. Taking some damage to his King. King is going to go to... No, he didn't go down. I was going to say he's going to go to Phoenix, but he actually doesn't even have the Phoenix. He actually would put the Phoenix on the Warden here. Which is definitely out of the ordinary. Warden follows the king now as the queen secures the tunnel takedown. Got the eagle artillery down as we wanted from that initial entry. So everything's going pretty smooth here. But a lot of base left here. And only a minute left to close it out. King will pop his ability. How did the king still have his ability at the point there? I guess he just never got targeted by the monolith. But he will get the scatter shot down. The world champion goes to the outside of the base there. Which means his force out there is even more protected than it was already. And looks like the king, even though he went down. No, the king's not down. <laughs> I keep looking over there expecting this king to be gone. But this king refuses to go down. He's got all the healers on him. Tons and tons of force still moving. Looks like the Yetis came out of the siege barracks and have joined in with the queen in the very core of the base there. So she's getting a lot of extra firepower there. He just has to get his way past the defensive king. And I guess his king is still alive. RC ability goes off here. The defensive king will try to block him from getting through these last couple buildings. RC ability plus the Yetis end up taking out the defensive Grand Warden down the line. And there it is. He's already cheering. He knows he's got it. Looks like he's got it completed under control here. The Queen somehow end up cutting through the middle base there. Survives until the end. And of course, the King. <laughs> the, the King still lead the charge there. All the way around that entire base. GG, Sivan. Man, it's, it's weird seeing Morio in a United Gaming GS jersey, you know? <laughs> but I guess Navi moved too slow to sign him. And now he's over here playing in United Gaming GS. And we'll see what he can do. But if you guys didn't hear, uh, Navi actually did fill their uh, fifth spot there on the roster. Synthay actually ended up joining the roster and he will play with Navi for the World Championship. So that means that uh, Morio and uh, GS here are gonna have to find a way to get their own golden ticket and get into the World Championship separately, maybe through the open qualifier. So we'll see what happens there, but he does get a little bit close to this town hall before he gets back onto it, but he kind of managed that invisibility tower a little bit weird, but it ultimately worked in the end. And he now will make his way forward to the monolith. He does freeze it, rage up again, get the queen's healers to top her off a little bit there. She gets through some of these lighter buildings and he needed another freeze onto the monolith where he'll go to ability. He'll burn an invisibility on it. Okay, good charge right now. Flame flicker over the side of the base there. Did not get the eagle artillery down though, so maybe the super means can step up there and finish it off though. The Eagle Artillery down would be very, very impactful, but it does have the Super Hogs going into the very bottom base here. Now, the regular Hogs still on standby. Queen still trying to get this model down. She does ultimately go to ability. And she dodges that Tornado Trap, though. But look at this. She's actually going to step all the way forward here. Could she reset him at the Queen? She got a couple shots off there. But she dies. Okay. Healers are getting wrecked right now. All the healers go down. Oh, rip. That was looking good. That was looking really, really good. But it completely stops. This is the chance for Escalator Esports, AKA the offices of Iqbal and Iqbal Attorney at Clash. We'll see if they can get in the lead here and pass up GS. Janice will do the honors. Let's see what we can do here with a Super Bowler Smash attack. Starting with a Queen Charge. Usually you see Super Bowler start with a Warden Walk, so definitely gonna be requiring this Queen. Stays under control here, but notice how if he's gonna do a queen charge, he attacks at the line of symmetry on the base to make sure the queen doesn't have to worry about going off in the wrong direction because either way would end up working out for him. But he puts in the warden and he will push his way in and get the monolith down. Looks like he does not burn any additional spells or an abil ability here. And he can go all the way to get the eagle artillery and then he can just be patient here as long as he can finish this up in about a minute total used. Then he can have, wherever this queen goes, be joined by the super bowlers, and they can wreck through the rest of the base there. But one rage, 
We're gonna leave very light on the spells there for how much value we got out of the queen turns south and he immediately starts reacting down south there and you know put in the king put in like the uh these ice golems what are the ice golems going off in the wrong direction a little bit wasted there but maybe you could get the world champion over there does he just i feel like you just let that go i feel like you just leave that ice golem to do his thing there and you just focus on the main force here and just let it go but he does pop that word ability way before he reaches the town hall but the word ability was able to get him past Happen to use the queen ability. So that's a big pickup right there. But the queen is not cooperating. She's going to the top side. Uh, going out to the left, I mean. And she's taking the healers and she's holding them. Oh, this is a problem. Um, okay, he's going to blimp the town hall. The super bowlers would never go to the town hall in the first place there. But he does get the any bombs to secure the town hall takedown. But with the healers and the bowlers going in two separate directions because of the queen split not there, he's in a very tough spot. Now, the question is, can he get the percentage up here? I don't think he can triple anymore. He's going to get this over 80% there. He will give the lead for Iqbal and Iqbal. And does look like Escalator Esports will have the lead here to start up this war here by, looks like, 10, 20 buildings. Pops the Queen ability. He's honestly not that far off of the triple here. If he could have got that multi inferno down, he would be in a very, very close spot to triple in this. But not going to happen when everything that went wrong went wrong specifically the queen separating from the pack it is so awesome to see stadra back in clash and there he is signed with united gaming gs one of my longtime favorite players we'll see what he can do here with queen charge twin hogs but he will make his way in towards the eagle artillery i don't think he actually goes into the compartment though He's just trying to get the exterior threats there dealt with and set up the Flame Flinger. I wonder if he does anything with this Mortar, though. Could put in some Light Troops there. He's got a couple Barbarians and Archers on standby, but not really a very convenient spot to be able to drop that in. He puts them in now, but the Arch Tower over here is going to be picking them off here pretty quickly, but the Flame Flinger moves forward. Actually, you know what? I don't think the Flame Flinger reached the... the I don't think the Mortar can reach the Flame Flinger right now, and since he went to the Grand Warden first... He'll actually take out the Mortar as collateral, so that works out perfect for him. At the same time, the Queen goes directly into the Molten Inferno. The King goes to the outside of the base there to get the funnel formed, and the Queen will push her way into getting the defensive Queen out of the way there as well. But watch that Rage Tower damage. Lots of incoming damage here from the Expo. Gonna get the Molten Inferno off of him. Rage up again. Got the Multi down. Now can switch over to the Ice Golems. And the Flame Flinger handling the Eagle Artillery without any difficulty at all. With the defensive queen having her pad touch this wall right here, though, the queen will jump the wall and allow the king to directly engage her, which is a very, very big deal right there. Always, always keep an eye on the king pad, or the queen pad, I mean, to try to judge if the king is going to make the approach and he's going to make the first contact with her that he can actually reach her. Otherwise, you're just wasting your king. So good planning right there. Queen's still under heavy, heavy fire. But well, starting to recover a little bit now. Here comes the Super Hogs hit from the top of the base there. The Yetis come out of the Flame Flinger. Well, uh, I guess they're going to go to the trash. That's fine. The Ward Builder go off here and keep the Super Hog Riders alive as they push into the Defensive World Champion. Also caught the Headhunters to make sure that they get the Defensive World Champion down without any uh, any difficulty at all. But the Queen will pop her building, get the Town Hall down. And honestly, looking pretty good here. RC going to get the stun onto the Scatter Shot up top. So very big pickup right there. More Hogs collapsing in the outside of the base. And overall, he's going to lose the Queen here, but I think he's looking pretty solid. He just needs to beat the clock at this point. He's got the invincibility, so he can protect the Sword Champion through the Monolith. He'll use it right there. And he will step in and take it. He's got Headhunters that can help him get through all these Ground Skellies and get them cleaned up a little bit faster. And the Poison Lizard as well. He's still racing that clock, but he think he's winning that race here. 15 seconds. Yeah, he's got it. He's got it. All right, Stadra. Welcome back. Welcome back to the biggest stages in Clash of Clans Esports. Just like old times, gets it done with the Queen Charge Twin Hogs. United Gaming GS was down by 10 buildings going into that attack here. So that was a very, very clutch play from Stadra. But as we know, Iqbal and Iqbal, attorney at Clash. Oh, that's probably not a part of their slogan, but they should add it. They should add it. <laughs> it sounds like a lawyer's office, right? But uh, Attorney at Clash, <laughs> Paul, going to be pushing his way in and try to sustain the lead here for his team. 
Need to get the multi-inferno out of the way here. Oh, wait, what? I wasn't expecting that. I don't know where... Oh. Okay. Interesting pathing. Has a jump spell. And you know what? I kind of like it. Because now look at the value that the flame is going to pick up there. I thought the queen was going to have to charge into the multi to go take it down. And then I was looking for a town hall kill condition here. If the queen was going to go to the outside of the base there. But you know what? This is actually going to work out great as long as he can keep this queen alive. And she's got some damage on her right now. He's got rocket booze overhead. And this is always dangerous when you're fighting off the CC. And they're blocking your HP bar. So you can't even see how much health your queen has. And I feel like you have to... Be very, very aware of the damage coming at you, but you also need to play a little bit more conservatively. You can't see your queen's health, but she's she's fine. She's healthy. She powers through the defensive CC. We'll step her way to the town hall. Flame Fleek are going to pick up multi inferno, and the hogs will charge the eagle artillery, and then he can make his way across. Look at the headhunters up here. The headhunters protected under the word ability, even though he didn't even deploy to the area where the queen was. He just still made sure to get those headhunters down to make sure that he takes advantage of that extra protection and gets them delivered. We've got a minute left here. RC building still intact. The queen has a path to leave out to, into the town hall area, and the town hall is going to have the poison long faded by the time she steps through, so he's looking very good there. Queen ability and RC ability intact here. He's got a little bit of cleanup still on standby. Lots the time here. Not really worried about that. He's just sitting back and relaxing. Yeah. <laughs> He needs, there's not a lot he can do here. He knows he's got it. He knows he's got it. Iqbal and Iqbal still pushing to try to get the bracket reset and force this to a second war. Although I guess you technically would have to think of it like a third war because they already faced each other in the upper bracket final. So if they end up winning this, then the teams would be one and one for the tournament. And in the last round would end up actually deciding it. So they got the lead. The 10 buildings up. Very, very slim margins between these teams. But United Gaming GS playing from behind. Ogiati gonna have to make the difference here if they want to put some pressure over to Iqbal and Iqbal and maybe force them to make a mistake. But Lightning deploys down south. King and Queen just move along the top edge of the base there and We'll have the Log Launcher run down the Expo and the Multi Inferno. Expo's locked onto the Log Launcher right now, so it's gonna go down a little bit early, but we got the walls open. Rage Tower activates, not investing his own Rage there. Typically, you wanna save your spells. And most, if you use anything for the heroes, maybe a most like a skeleton spell to give them some protection, but don't bother using Rages. Don't bother. Taking away resources away from your Lalo, unless there's a very high value target that you are very close to be able to take it out. But we need to see the town hall taken down now. And look at this, he was able to free trigger the rage tower. He'll freeze up on the Procure, not at 50% there. So he will reach it by the time he gets to the town hall, but at least the town hall is not doing any damage on the approach. But the warden ability is on standby. Rage is up, pops the warden early. And he'll push his way in there and he will Take the blaster if he doesn't one-shot up with the Rage Tower, or with the Rage Spell, I mean. He does get that dealt with. The blue split there. The inside group, the smaller of the two groups, takes out all the multi infernos And Ogiati's looking very, very good right now. Just needs to get the world champion past the monolith here. Has a couple freezes, so it'd be worth a freeze there to save her. But wait, is that an Ice Hound? What the heck? Where? Why is there an Ice Hound with the world champion? Where did that even come from? <laughs> you know what? It got him through the monolith, and obviously the Lalo didn't need it, so he's got it under control. It's a triple. Ogiati will put the pressure over to Escalator Esports. Look at this right here. Right, right here. Imagine using a Lava Hound to trigger a Rage Tower with no other purpose. I, I guess, you know, maybe you can get a couple of the red air bombs out of the way there with it as well but you know what that's kind of crazy that he would invest that much into it but now we have reich pushing his way in 
for the fourth attack here from Iqbal and Iqbal. So I need to find his camera here. I'm not sure if I see his camera. That's him. There he is. I, oh, wait. We got to mess with the cameras again here. I got to put uh, the two vertical. I got to put that vertical camera and then that one. There we go. There he is. <laughs> we did it. We we, uh, we sorted the cameras again. The, <laughs> the call is always weird there when we have a mix of vertical and horizontal cameras. But let's see what he can do here. Got the Eagle Artillery down there with the Queen Charge initially. Goes into this scattered shot compartment and clears it out there. No issues. And then recalls. Leaves the healer behind, though. And we'll redeploy the Queen there to go out to the other scatter shot. And it is an Electro Titan Smash Attacker. So he's already got the funnel down the, down the line here. He wall breaks over there. And that gives access for him to leave the current compartment and go into that top compartment. And I guess it gives another path for Electro Titans to go in, but they're kind of separated from the Queen right now. That could be a little bit of a problem. And that Gaming GS desperately needs to get a defense here if they want to get into the lead here. A lot of pressure for Reich. But he'll engage the defensive Ice Golems. Electro Titans are turning back over to the Ice Golems now as they have another chance to go into the multi inferno down the line, but they're all taking the turn backwards. And there was another wall break that was used to get him into the Rage Tower, but not really getting access to the jump just yet. So he's going to end up having to break the wall, but he'll Rage up and he'll break the wall a little bit faster. Is he going to the good wall? Eh, kind of. He does, okay, he does have the jump give him access over to the Multi-Inferno. And so now he gets a nice regrouping there and he can go to the Town Hall, but that cost him a lot of time as he not only did the Recall Queen Charge, but... Just getting stalled up and having to burn the rage spell early does cost you a lot of time. And now we won't have that extra damage output as he goes into, into the last block of defense. But the world champion pushing through. We got that defensive king out of the way earlier. Got the defensive royal champion out of the way earlier. I guess the Electro Titans probably took her right there. But he'll push this royal champion through. RC ability still intact. He's got the RC to clear the bulk of the defenses. He has his one P.E.K.K.A. That P.E.K.K.A. needs to survive right there. He needs to damage output. This is going to be close, but time is of the essence. And he has to go through another wall with those electric Titans at the core of the base here. Ten seconds. He's got to move fast. There's nothing you can do. We can just sit back and watch. And he's not going to make it. He's not going to make it. It is going to be 98%. As he let that Queen Charge just coast a little bit too long before he extracted her out. But, you know what? He has percentage advantage. He got his team percentage advantage. And so, if United Gaming GS doesn't triple this, then Iqbal and Iqbal can still force his Grand Finals to bracket reset and to another war. It is going to be a mix of Lalo and Super Barbarians. Skelly Donut... Probably a Skelly Donut here. Skelly Donut going after the Eagle Artillery and both of the scatter shots. And a lot of people have asked, why do we sometimes do skeletons and why do we sometimes do bats? And with that value claimed, there's a reason right there. Do not want the sweepers knocking your bat spells back and knocking them out of the invisibility. So even though we only went after defenses there and didn't actually go after the CC itself, which would obviously require the skeleton spells to take it down, if you're gonna do the donut right in front of the sweepers, you have to go all skeleton spells there because the bats would just get knocked out. But a very good amount of value out of the balloons and the warden able to secure the tunnel takedown and wipe out that core of the base. A lot of base left here. It's all going to be down to the heroes. Strong setup. We've been seeing a lot of people really favoring the setup here pretty heavily. But at the same time, not just clearing out that left side, but he also cleared out the far right side of the base there as well. And he just did a two prong. Like, there's so much going on in the attack here. It's kind of hard to follow. But he'll push his king in. The... No, just kidding. It's just a queen. He'll just push the queen in the very bottom of the base here and go after the defensive queen. Electro Titan giving her the assist. A couple of super barbs being used, but not many so far. King deploys to the very top of the base. And is he just trying to set up the world champion? If he gets these expos under control, 
I feel like the Road Champion can take a lot of the base there, but I am a little bit concerned about the model from the very core of the base. If the King and the Queen will be able to go in and get the defensive heroes out of the way and get the multi-infernos out of the way there, then I would have a lot more faith in him just using a skeleton spell to look at that monolith. But I'm a little bit concerned right now. A minute left here. Gotta get this through. Okay, well, if he get And, I, you know, I suppose if he can't get the triple to go through, he would be able to at least get the percentage up here pretty high and still force a pretty significant performance out of Vic Ball and Nick Ball to close out the war. But he does get past the defensive row champion. He's got the RC ability. Hold on, this is actually working. His queen's still alive with the ability attack. He's got 30 seconds. Just don't time fail this. He has to close it out all the way to the triple because a time fail will not be high enough. RC ability still attack will go off now as he faces that monolith, but he's taking a lot of damage from the monolith. He takes a lot into that. He's he's gonna he's gonna potentially die to the multi. The multi could hold the line here. He does step through. Oh my god, he's got it, doesn't he? He's got it. No, no, wait, 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 wait! The wizard tower stays standing! Ten seconds to cross through! He can reach it! The queen steps through! He's got it! It's a triple with three seconds to spare! What a chaotic attack there! I didn't know whether that was gonna go through the majority of the attack there, but in the end, Ryuna pulls through, and ladies and gentlemen, that is two wins against Iqbal and Iqbal for United Gaming GS when Tribe Gaming fell to them twice. Very, very impressive performance. 14 stars on the board, and our champions in the Golden Heart Cup have been decided. United Gaming GS takes it.